Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on my video. I wanted to make sure to put this video out this morning because I got I got a little bit a little bit of fun last night with my friend from Japan. So I wanted to make sure to give you guys those daily expected moves and talk about something that I think is important. And that would be if we get a big rate cut. And and the way that you need to read into it when it comes to rate cuts is if they just do say 25 basis points in September. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Like everything is okay. There's nobody freaking out. But once they start to do 50 basis points, if they start to mention that, well, you got to pay attention because a lot of the time that leads right into recession shortly after. So that is what you need to know as we go forward into these charts. But first, I just wanted to bring up some of that data and tell you, hey, when would we get some of that info? Well, today might affect whether or not we are going to get a 25 basis point or a 50 basis point rate cut. And really how you want to think about it is 25 basis points, comfortable, we're cutting rates. Okay, things can still be okay. 50 basis points means the Fed might be freaking out a little bit. All right, 50 basis points would be a lot and they might be freaking out a little bit. So that's something you can pay attention to. We need to see how the PPI affects that, looking at those yields and things like that. But it's supposed to come in at 0.2. You look at this, consensus 0.2, even forecast 0.1. We'll see how the market reacts to this at this moment. But the main thing I wanted you to pay attention to is if we scroll all the way down to when we would actually maybe get some of that info would be August 21st, the day before, or sorry, is that August 21st? Yes, August 21st, the day before my birthday. Okay, so the FOMC minutes comes out around then. That's when we're really going to have to pay attention to this. So I really want you to have this in mind as we get into uh, this period of time next week when we'll go into the FOMC minutes and we might get some data on that. Okay, so we're paying attention to that. I just want to scroll down and make sure anything else is happening. We get GDP, uh, but overall the FOMC minutes will say something and then September is going to be the big time to pay attention to see whether or not we're getting 25 basis points, which could, which could mean, hey, this is kind of a regular thing. This is what the Fed kind of expects. Now it's time to cut. Or are they doing 50 basis points to saying, uh-oh, something is wrong and we have to cut a little bit quicker. Remember, if they cut very, very quickly, that means something in the system might be breaking and you need to pay attention because if something in the system is breaking, stock market might break too. And a lot of the time, if we cut by 50 basis points on the first cut by a year from now, we'll be 10% lower than where we are at from when we cut. So that is something to pay attention to with those signals. And that's why you really want to pay attention if there is a 25 basis point or a 50 basis point cut. Um, I've been looking into this a lot over the uh, pretty much all morning. I woke up really early so I can make a video for you guys. So thank you for liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it as I'm up at, you know, 5.30 a.m. researching this stuff for you guys. So let's get into the charts now let's look at some stock market let's look at some technical analysis for the spy cues apple tesla amazon nvidia amd meta and uh looking at amc and gme as well looking at a few stocks today but what do we notice well the two hour is still in that area where if you do drop you can experience some negativity as it is in negative territory that is something to be aware of but something else to be aware of is this is finally starting to creep positive um, the PCC level is still remaining relatively high. So the um, at, at least for the morning, you would say the two hour is telling you, hey, positivity can be here. Positivity can be here because of that RSI above the center line. That can switch very quickly. So we have to pay attention closely this morning to what's going on. Maybe we need to dig down a little deeper into a 30 minute chart just to see what's going on. And you notice that even though this was a very minor, minor pullback, maybe more a pullback with time, just barely in the price action, we do see it down getting close to the center line. And it's you know down by the center line, I would say, for the RSI as well, right? So if this is able to curl up, we could head towards that daily expected move. So if the two hour crosses down, we need to watch for that 526.47. Even if this does point down for now and pulls back more, we still need to pay attention to this 526.47. That's our daily expected move. And then 540.07, if we actually cross up, we need to pay attention to that. That is the breakdown area. So this is going to be a very key level. If the PPI comes out as good news, and they look like, hey, they're stalling out this market. So they might want to be convincing people to go to the call side. So what would be convincing to go to the call side? Well, you test the breakdown area. You can see this was the very obvious breakdown area. This is where I've said, I think we're going to go retest this area. And this is where we need to watch out. Are we able to kind of hold and get above that level? Or do we just see it as a big rejection and we actually fall back down? That's what we need to pay attention to this morning. And that is something very key. And 
and you need, to, you need to understand for today, this range is bigger than yesterday. It's much bigger. So you're at like the same level as yesterday at the starting point, but these spread out because yesterday they were only looking like this. Today, they're a little bit wider. So there is more volatility that is going to be in today. We get PPI. So let's pay attention this morning closely to these signals. All right. This is our 68% zone. So 68% of the time we will land in here. So if we do get excited in one direction, don't think, hey, this has to crash. You know, if that two hour rolls over, you could say that is going to be bad. And maybe we do see a 32% uh time to where something crazy does happen to get into a zone but we still would if that happens very early on have a have a 68 percent chance to land back in this zone and it goes the same for the opposite side okay so keep that in mind now looking at the keys <clears throat> a very similar look so as this is a morning video i'll keep it brief where's the breakdown area it's right in this little box up here okay so where is our daily expected move well it's right within that box 458 56 to the upside and we do have 444.20 so 444.20 to the downside so 68 percent zone right here these did um spread out a little bit so we need to pay attention this morning and see if this 30 minute can curl up, test that area and maybe break through it uh, this week to go test a weekly expected move. If we're able to get to this area, I am more leaning towards, hey, maybe we do get that left, that head, that right shoulder to actually head higher, but we'll pay it closely att close attention to the signals because of the two hour. The two hour is still within range. This one is, is barely, barely, barely going positive. So there is a tiny, tiny edge, I would say on the two hour for the bulls at this moment but we get ppi we have one of those rocks in our stream so something on this channel that we like to say a lot of the time and a lot of you guys know this we trade like water it just means we're adaptable that's why we look at both sides we're never going to fully be like a hundred percent something is going to happen we're the most confident i can usually get in a move is about you know 90 percent I can say, oh, there's a 90% chance or something like that, but there's always a chance that the stock could roll over at any time. Any stock you're watching, the price action, you could literally have see that at any time. So you have to be willing to react. And we talk about rocks in the stream. That would be things like data. Data can really shift things around and cause some craziness, cause some volatility. So you have to pay attention this morning as we get PPI, and that can affect what people decide to do this morning and you have to pay close attention to the reaction to the data not just the data itself because we're in an environment where i think people are confused is bad news good news is bad news bad news again we i don't think people necessarily know we're going to pay attention to the dollar and the pcc this morning to see how people are leveraging themselves if they get over leveraged here everyone goes to the call side we might experience a pullback but we also could experience hey a big drop okay this two hour could curl over to create the stronger base still this week so we'll pay attention right now i'm still leaning towards hey maybe a dip today and then we actually curl back up or a test of that area then we dip down and cross back up to go test this level i still think that they wouldn't overreact and do the 50 basis points but we have to keep that into consideration we have to look at the data and see if that is the most likely scenario as of right now i think the most likely scenario is a 25 basis point cut which would mean that this market can remain in a bullish trajectory for a little bit of time maybe going into early next year okay that's what i would say based on what is happening right now in front of me now as we go into things like apple and things like that you're going to see these things are more going positive they're already testing testing breakdown areas. So you can see this morning is going to be very important for Apple. And something to keep in mind are your weekly expected moves. Those are given out over on Patreon. So if you need some weekly expected moves for say Apple or any stock that we cover on this channel, including like Palantir, Microsoft, Met, or, uh, Microsoft and Google, we do, do, we do have those as well for you. Well, then this would be the area to first pay attention to. But those weekly ranges say, hey, we could come and test these levels up in here, which is kind of good for the structure, right? Get up to 225, then see that base out. We can get that left head and right shoulder. So I want to be aware of that. But I also want to be aware that, hey, this two hour crosses over. We could go make a stronger base first. So we'll pay attention to these things. Maybe this leaks into next week. We'll find out. But for the most part, that's what I see on Apple. On the 30 minute, you're just noticing what, hey, we experienced some kind of pullback. So it is possible to head up to 225, 223. Um, actually today, I think that is very, very possible if we're able to just curl up this MACD slightly. Ooh, positive move for a little bit there. And then we get to a point where people might get a little bit over 
excited and get too many calls and then that actually causes us to need some kind of pullback right we just know that the opposite is usually happening we pay attention to the dollar for these moves we'll be looking at it live this morning so make sure to click into my channel if you're watching this right now and probably live this morning um, if we're around the market open tesla this is one I still like, and at the end of the day, what are we what are we overall doing here on the 30 minute? We're getting very, very tight and we're consolidating. We're making a little head and shoulders here, possibly to get to this zone. So I think this zone will be very important. Once again, I still think Tesla needs to really test its breakdown area. If you wanted to make a breakdown area, it would be like a box in here. You kind of include these lows, but you could test anywhere in this area this week. And that's what I'm paying attention to for Tesla. Is it able to see that positivity and really get this 30 minute into a positive trend as it's struggling? and it's getting really tight or are we going to see something bad are we going to see the two hour have to curl over as that is still very negative you notice tesla is very different from apple very different from the spying the cues it is still negative so that means it still has some work to be done aka this can curl down for a brief moment maybe make another strong base move right get some kind of divergence like this would make sense for tesla so we have to pay attention to this morning but as you look at the 30 minute that two hours crossed up the 30 minute just crossed up into positive territory so that would say even though we have kind of a bad bar right here this is still telling us hey we have potential to go positive here so we'll pay attention closely this morning i think the first like hour this morning is going to be very very important for stocks to see what's happening going forward as we switch over to amazon this one's been struggling but it's been consolidating a lot of liquidity built here as we are trying to do some kind of i would say cup with a handle that's just kind of fizzled out and really consolidated so we're still looking for that curl up of the macd to see if we have another move higher and then we want to pay attention to the two hour again because that thing is still negative we can see some kind of drop that creates a stronger base pay attention to your weekly expected moves that are over on patreon and if you need to know how to trade around these moves why we're paying attention to divergence why we're paying attention to those weekly moves that's what we do for a lot of the trade setups and that's what we do over on patreon that's what we do in the course in the description okay there is a technical analysis course down in the description for a hundred dollars it's 90 percent off until the end of august i highly encourage you to take that if you are looking to learn how to trade in a market like this one it's a lot of fun to trade in a market like this one so if this market is overall like beating you up learn how to trade in it and you will start to have fun in it and that's what i can suggest for today nvidia this one going to the top of the channel this is something that we talked about and we said i even took a play here remember and what are we doing we're going to the top of the channel i have gotten out of a lot of stuff here right i've gotten a, out of a lot of my calls in this area but i'm still leaving a couple runners in case we see that actually go up because this is going into positive territory on the two hour we had divergence and that daily scale looks like hey today's the day are we going to cross up or are we going to reject to create the stronger base so how we're going to know if we're rejecting is if this two hour curls up over. if that two hour is fully able to curl over then i do believe we're going to make that stronger base at this point we'll obviously always be paying attention to a higher uh higher lows in this area because what did we do we just broke through a zone we retest in it and then maybe we can head higher this is exactly what we talked about up here if you get to the top of the channel you're able to hold up a little bit better you can curl up and maybe we end up at a key level right here which happens to be one the breakdown and it ends up being a breakdown level and a level where you could create a head and shoulders so something like this could be on the table left head we react up get that right shoulder down in this area i think that would be a good look for nvidia it is still overall bullish at this moment on the two hour so the 30 minute crossing over at the end of the day telling you hey a pullback might be necessary maybe we need to look at the reaction to the data but could that pullback just go and fill this gap and then turn right back up that's what we're going to be paying attention to this week for nvidia and i highly suggest you pay attention to it as well as the 30 minute looks like it may need some more time to base out but the reaction to the data is what we're really paying attention to this morning amd just not looking the best uh, especially on the 30 minutes so i want to clear it up by looking at the two hour that thing is climbing trying to go positive at this moment if we need to make that stronger base hey curl down right curl down create the stronger base maybe a double bottom or something like that for amd it just doesn't look like the cleanest stock to trade not the cleanest setup even though you do have great divergence down here so it's not to say like amd isn't one that i could take a chance on it's just more saying I don't like the behavior of the stock, right? I just don't like the behavior of the stock. So maybe I'll trade something else like Nvidia. And that's kind of what I've been talking about. But if AMD is able to curl up on the daily scale, what can happen? Well, 
the key thing here is even if it does curl up on this daily, you see how close that is to curling up. We still have some rejection areas up here where the 50 and the 200 are kind of kissing up there. You can see a reaction to this and then actually just fail. So we'll pay attention to that. Uh, maybe where you react up to this and get a higher low. So this is where I'll really be paying attention if we see positivity somewhere around, you know, this little box right here, probably 151 all the way up to 155. I think right in there is an area to pay attention if this daily crosses up for some consolidation or the ring move down, right? Another move down. So we'll pay attention to that going forward, but AMD not looking the cleanest, but might give you a daily signal very soon. Meta, we're seeing that daily signal already confirmed uh, this bar right here and boom. Okay, we head to the upside. Great move there so far. Right now you would say bullish in positive territory. So upside is the most likely on the daily scale. Let's look over at the two hour though, looking kind of cooked. Some divergence kind of forming here between the, these levels. So you're getting a divergence between these points and therefore if this crosses over we have to pay attention that might be a little bit more dramatic to the downside so this is something to pay attention to if we wanted to break down from this area let's talk about something bearish if we wanted to break down I believe that 45308 would come in to be a little bit important we could see a left head and right shoulder over here so there are some ways up there are some ways down as of right now meta still bullish on the 30 minute you're pulling back right we see that a little divergence is down here but overall you're still pulling back with time okay you've moved sideways a lot so if you just see that break to the upside you're no longer overbought on the 30 minute this can continue to the upside maybe we reach the top of our channel that's what i see for meta going forward amc and gme these things were curled up and that's great this is fantastic and then it curls right back down you go okay this is bad again so you're still waiting for that to cross up the main signal here for amc and gme is still going to be that daily scale which we could turn up at pretty much any point we're really hovering around that five dollars we're getting very very tight in here still we're building a ton a ton a ton a ton of liquidity so when this does break out if it breaks to the upside and we close above that 200 you can see something crazy all right we can see something crazy if we get above i think it's a level of 576 let me double check that level it's actually 556 all right 556 is what you want to pay attention to so 556 is the level that would be unexpected right so the market maker would be taken by surprise and that means gamma squeeze can take place if we're able to close above 556. gamestop this one we need to uh, give you a little level for that as well um, so we're going to put that on our chart real quick and we're just going to mark that off. We're going to give you that level. So 2418 is going to be that level where you need to break through. And what do we need to do? We need to cross up on this daily MACD and you see how close it is to crossing up on this daily MACD. The only problem is you've seen that build up for a while. So this two hour could just roll down. Um, as we switch over two hour could just roll down into negative territory maybe to create the stronger base so that's what i would be paying attention to this morning see if that's able to curl down maybe we head to that weekly expected move and see something down here before we're actually going to see any upside a lot of two hour divergences lead to daily crossing so i would pay close attention to that now as we go and look at volatility one thing i do have to say is I myself do pay attention to the signals from volatility. We can see pops in volatility for sure. But as of yesterday, we actually did see, okay, maybe we're able to see some kind of downside today if this is able to pop. But overall, we've crossed over on the daily scale hinting, hey, there's a little bit more probability for some kind of squeeze to the upside, especially if people keep keeping uh, puts in the market and adding puts into the market, which seems to be what's happening at this moment. So pay attention because we could experience a squeeze. Doesn't mean we can't see a pullback in this at some point, right? That two hour can pop up for a little bit. We just wanna see is that pop going to create a higher low or a lower high, sorry. Is that going to create a lower high and is the market itself going to create a higher low or is it going to create some kind of divergence in the market? But overall, we just wanna see is the two hour popping, is that able to roll back down? I believe if we get a pop and that does roll back down, we most like, and it doesn't go too high, it rolls back down kind of like here, then we could see more of a squeeze going forward and that might just be some kind of trap, so we'll pay attention to it. Really, it just tells us this week, and thank you for making it to the end of the video, but really it just tells us, hey, we have to be on our toes. Uh, volatility is still high, it's still above 20, which is when you really wanna be careful still in your trade setups, wanna be quick with it, wanna make sure you're trading like water and paying close attention to the signals, especially if you're looking at those shorter time frames. So um, just means be on your toes for today. We're gonna be live in a little bit so thank you so much for liking and subscribing i really do appreciate it and i look forward to streaming with you guys in a little bit and good luck with your trades for today thank you guys for watching really appreciate it i'll see you guys in a bit peace